We're back. This is Wild Treasures, a series that highlights South Africa's conservation efforts concerning the wild. As you may know, animal populations in areas are influenced by the availability of food. This is no different for owls. Owls usually start off their day at a quiet, unnoticeable place. They can be found roosting in pairs or as a group, which is called a parliament. Owls will often stretch, yawn and comb their heads with their claws in the mornings. They also clean their claws and toes using their beaks and are known to bath in shallow water or by standing in the rain. In their relaxed stage, their plumage is loose and fluffy, but as soon as it is alarmed, it pulls its feathers tight to the body and becomes slim, while standing up straight and at times flicking its tail. Just like most species, owls can be aggressive in an area around its young. They rarely attack humans, but when nesting, they would do anything to protect their territory and their families. They have a posture for when feeling threatened, which includes lowering of their heads, spreading of their wings, and ruffling up their feathers to increase their size. Eco solutions have been around for 15 years, involved in urban ecology. They have since come up with a plan that is designed to educate and create owl-friendly environments. Can you tell us more about the Owl Township project and how it started? Uh, the Owl project started a few years ago. There was a surge in our rodent populations in Sibogeng and the Department of Health um, asked Eco Solutions to come up with an eco-friendly way to actually solve the rodent problem. And that's how it started many, many years ago. But now um, it used to actually uh, operate as a CSI project by Eco Solutions. But it grew so big that we decided to actually create it into, to be an MPC. So now it's a registered MPC that runs a lot of educational programs at different schools in Gauteng Townships. Can you tell us how many students have been a part of the project since it started? Over 83,000 school kids have actually been a part of this project. It's been so amazing to see just how, how much growth the project had. I mean, it started off as just a small school in Sibulgeng, two schools in Sibulgeng, and now we've had schools in Togoza, Fosloro, Soweto, Brakpan, Tembisa, all those townships, so it's been really great. What was your perception about owls before you started working on the project? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I didn't have a perception per se. I just thought, I mean, they're, they're birds. Uh, but I mean, I've had uh, conversations with like my gran and she asked me, no, did you see an owl? We had an experience actually the one night. We were actually going out of the car and we saw an owl. She's like, did you see that owl? That means somebody's actually, you know, doing something. But I mean, I, I don't really believe it. Uh, no, I never had like negative um, perceptions. I just have, had never interacted with an owl per se. So I was a bit intimidated, but I wasn't scared. Yeah. Can we see the project grow from schools outside of Gauteng? Yes, definitely. I mean, the plan is to get to a point where in every township there's an owl box, there are schools that, are, you know, the school kids that have been involved in the project, school kids that can tell adults and, you know, educate their parents about owls and the value of an owl and an ecosystem. So we're definitely looking to go global. Um, I mean, people that have followed the project know that it was called the Township Owl Project, but we're planning on going global and that's why we changed the name to owlproject.org because we want to actually expand to more schools around Joburg and around South Africa. What do you think can be done to change perceptions of owls? 
What I think can be done, which is, is exactly what we're doing, education. I think that people are intimidated by things that do, they don't know. I mean, we don't really see owls, we sort of hear them at night, so we're intimidated about things that we don't know. And I think the best way to tackle that is education, which is what the project is about, you know. We hold a lot of educational owl talks where we have an entire group, you know, of school kids, and we interact with them. What do you know about owls? What do you think owls do in an environment? And we educate them on the value of owls. And after that, people are able to say, yes, actually, I want an owl. You know, one of the things that we actually do through the project is do a lot of rescuing, rehabilitation, and releasing of owls. And over the years, we've actually noticed how it's changed from people calling us, crying, no, we want you to remove the owl, to actually, no, actually place an owl box, because now people actually understand how owls work. So education is the number one thing. Thank you so much for your time and the great work that you do. It's a pleasure. Thank you. It's one thing hearing about a great idea like the OWL project and another thing seeing it come to life, especially in an academic environment like this where kids can further extend their knowledge about wildlife. Can you tell us where you heard about the OWL project and what made you want to be a part of it? Um, we, our learners sometimes report like almost everything that is happening in their environment. So there was uh, a, actually um, a concern that there's a lot of rodent in the area. And because we were at that time running a project about uh, animal care, even wild animals and uh, caring for young girls and women. It was like a combined project where we were teaching learners to take care of the, each other, like take care of the animals, because the objective was that now if learners learn to take care of animals at a very young age, they tend not to become the abusers, either of animals or people as adults. So that was the aim of having that program. So because we were already doing the program, then the Township Owl Project people approached us to say, because you already have learners who are already interested in wildlife and they understand wild animals and uh, they are value actually to the society. So how about introducing the program here since there is a concern about the rodent infestation in the area? So that's how we, we got on board. Was there any resistance from students or parents when you decided to implement the project? Uh, the learners that were involved in the project were those who were already uh, like uh, knowing about wildlife and wild animals and owls and everything else. So from the group that we had, there was very, very little resistance. But for the larger school community there was a resistance because uh, I'm sure you know that now there is a township legend or you call it myth or whatever that owls are bringing in bad lucks and stuff like that but uh, with uh, education all those myths were like wiped out and now they understand the value and they came to appreciate and that is why when we introduced the owls to the school we did not only introduce them to the group that are already in the know, you know, like teaching to the converted. We invited the entire school community to be part of it, to understand why they are here and to understand the value of having them around us. So would you say that this project has been a success? Uh, to a certain extent, I believe so. Uh, because we haven't heard of serious problems in the area. Um, especially about the rodent. I cannot like uh, seriously say there is no problem completely because of the, I, I know in Santon there are lots and lots of rodents also. So I'm not sure if ever the problem is sorted completely like it's non-existent. But we know that now the, our project, the, the little that we could contribute to the community did make a difference. So you would say the project has made people change their views about owls and yes. have put a damper on the myth? Completely, yes. Okay. Thank you so much for having us. Okay. 
us are friendly and they are trying to keep us from red and all of that stuff. Before I started uh, taking this project, I thought that owls were evil because um, many people just told us that if owl is on top of your roof, then somebody's going to die. The responsibilities were to take care of the owl and feed it. So we had to like feed it with uh, small chicks, so the chicks were frozen. So we had to take them out in the mornings so we can defrost during the day. Then after school we'd uh, take the chicks then feed the owls and make sure that they are in good condition and not ill or something. hope to have dismissed most of the myths about owls. My name is Stefani Ansa van Feren and it has been my pleasure bringing you this episode of Wild Treasures. Till next time, take care. <laughs>